Hi dear students, dear friends, welcome to Galland IAS. Our prelims examination is very near to us. Then are you ready to bear with me for the next 10 to 15 minutes? If yes, then I will help you to revise ancient India quickly easily by solving previous year's questions and uh, probable questions for this year prelims because ancient India in every prelims they ask four to six questions from ancient India also here we will be applying the elimination method where you how to apply your educated guts elimination method will help you to solve questions so when it comes to elimination let me tell you sometimes out of the four choices in UPC prelims questions four choices usually given out of four choices sometimes you can see why I am in the world why I am in the world type of alien statements out of the four choices four answer choices one choice can be the most absurd stupid or totally contrasting statements are given totally contrasting choices by eliminating them you can easily reach out to the answer accurate answer so sometimes it is by eliminating the most absurd or the most contrasting most alien options from the answer choices sometimes by tracing the harmonious the harmonious answer choices sometimes you can see that out of the four choices maybe one or two answer choices they convey the same meaning similar similar answer choices or conveying the same meaning or conveying the same definitions okay by eliminating them or by eliminating the other you can reach out the answer as per demand of question sometimes you can see UPC use very exaggerated statements exact exact exaggerated statements using additional fittings additional fittings can be unwanted phrases unwanted idioms unwanted like extreme words absolute words etc so most cases i'm not telling that 100 percent that will be correct but most cases such exaggerated statements you know happen to be wrong statements okay so this is this is in various methods you can apply elimination uh, and you can reach out the answer we are solving some potential uh, questions and previous years questions to revise ancient india now here this is regarding indus valley civilization when you study indus valley civilization few points i am giving you indus valley civilization it was an urban yes it's urban phase it was most advanced phase okay indus valley or harappan civilization it was a secular civilization it had a kind of secular federal type of government federal type of government they were first time exporters of cotton exporters of cotton they were first time exporters of cotton they had a trade contact with Mesopotamia Egypt and uh, uh, Middle East okay so these are some points I'm sharing with you with this information you are able to solve this question now it was predominantly a secular civilization religious element though present did not dominate the scene exactly it was a secular civilization during this time cotton was used for manufacturing textiles in india a woven cotton piece discovered from mohan Jadaro and people of indus civilization priesting statue they used to these uh, cotton shawls and women used uh, these uh, skirt cotton skirts etc so cotton textiles uh, existed manufacturing textiles existed in india both the statements are correct here now there is a model question Consider the following statements about Indus Valley Civilization. Ragi Gargi in Haryana is said to be strictly an urban settlement. Ragi Gargi in Haryana, an urban settlement, it's okay. But you see that an additional fitting added by UPC or additional fitting given here. Ragi Gargi in Haryana is said to be strictly, said to be strictly. Actually, Ragi Gargi is not just uh, urban settlement, it is also a pre-urban settlement. Okay, pre-Harappan and the Harappan settlements uh, you can see in this Ragi Gargi. So the first statement is wrong okay the first statement is wrong you are eliminating choices a and d now there is granaries and assembly halls located in the west side of the city exactly you know that in the civilization most of the city is divided into two parts western side eastern side 
the big buildings are located yes big buildings are located in the western side which is called a citadel granaries great chubat or maybe uh, these uh, ruling classes residential building assembly hall college buildings etc and these workmen's quarters workmen's quarters are in the eastern side so granary is granary assembly halls located in the western side of the city exactly true so your answer is two only because the remaining uh, answer codes you see two only and three only so you know that second statement is correct one so your answer you are eliminating other codes also you are reaching out the answer two only anyway let us solve the third one third statement they worship to cow as fertility goddess cow as fertility goddess then upc will give you some tricks some tips you know some 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 things will be there yes with which you can easily eliminate that uh, answer choice you see they worship to cow as fertility goddess as evident from the zeals as evident from the zeals actually we know that in the zeals there is no cow representation other animal representations are there human or maybe many pictographic inscriptions many things you can see in the zeals but in the zeals one cow is one animal is missing which is cow so that statement is additional fitting gives you they had fertility cult worship but we have no evidence that cow was worshipped as fertility cult from the zeals okay no evidence from the seal the indus people were earliest people to import cotton from the west just to distract your attention you see yes they were first to import cotton from the west we learned that okay when you study indus valley civilization we learned that they were first exporters of cotton exporters of cotton not importers if you see that rithik roshan movie also you can see people are selling cotton domestically and uh, internationally okay they have overseas trade and they have domestic trade anyway there is no import of cotton from the west and there is no idea like they had contact with the west okay so anyway these three and four choices can be eliminated one can be eliminated answer is two only now it's about four vedas four vedas so vedic literature is important for you samhita sadar then brahmana sadar aranyaka sadar upanishad sadar samhita collection of hymns in praise of various gods okay rigveda samhita samaveda samhita yajurveda samhita other veda samhita brahmanas are uh, the prose versions they are explaining the meanings of the hymns yajurveda they explain these uh, or they give the uh, like formulas for various sacrifices then other veda is regarded as a work of non aryans or lower than other three samhitas and also it deals with uh, magical uh, charms and spells now there is a model question they are called forest books concluding portions of brahmanas they deal with the mysticism and symbolism sometimes upc will be asking asking question like this they are giving the description out of the description you have to find out the answer okay so just get the definitions of these terms terminologies of this ancient medieval india now here this is all about uh, arinigas they are forest books and they deal with uh, the philosophy of rituals and sacrifices they deal with the philosophy of rituals and the sacrifices they deal with the mysticism and symbolism obviously that is arinigas now again there is a usual type of question upc has comparison between this uh, indus civilization and uh, rigvedic culture so please note down few points here when it comes to indus valley civilization let me tell you this was an urban civilization and the indus people they were peace loving people okay it was a bronze age civilization and uh, there is no appearance of iron again they practiced agriculture and most importantly they relied on this trade then i said it yes they had this uh, cotton trade they had this cotton trade when it comes to rigvedic culture it was pastoral mainly it was pastoral community cattle rearing cattle breeding to some extent they practiced agriculture also they were warriors they were basically horse riders warriors and further uh yes yes horse riders they were horse riders then rigvedic culture let me tell you it was a rural culture okay their mainstay was this uh, cattle rearing cattle rearing and this uh, agriculture now here rigvedic aryans used to the first question and its a statement rigvedic aryans used to coat of mail and helmet in warfare they were warrior classes obviously they used okay we get information from rigvedic hymns 
Rigvedic Aryans and Indus people, they were peace loving people. There is no evidence of wearing these uh, helmets and uh, armors, etc., and the uh, fighting wars. No, no evidence. Rigvedic Aryans knew gold, silver, copper. Indus people only copper and iron. Indus civilization, Bronze Age civilization, it is not an Iron Age civilization. Iron makes its appearance in Indian subcontinent in the Gangetic basins, that is from 1000 BC onwards only. Rigvedic Aryans had domesticated horses, whereas there is no evidence of Indus people being aware of this animal. Exactly. Yes, there is no, according to UPCK, there is no, even though historians, archaeologists have different opinions, your answer key given by UPC, there is no evidence of Indus people aware about this animal. So, your answer has to be 1 and to 3 only, 1 and to 3 only. Now, the probable question from this mother question, what was the main difference between mature Indus civilization and Rigvedic civilization or Rigvedic culture? Mature means urban, urban phase. Indus civilization was an urban, whereas Rigvedic civilization was rural. Exactly. The same, you know, the similarity between the question, the compatibility between question and answer choice, you can say, it is a mature, what is difference between uh, mature Indus civilization and Rigvedic culture. So, mature means urban. Here also the same urban is used. So, Indus civilization was an urban culture, mature phase was an urban culture, then Rigvedic civilization that was rural culture. Indus civilization more relied on trade, whereas Rigvedic people relied only on agriculture, only on agriculture. The word is only, it is not only on agriculture. It was pastoral economy plus agriculture. Vedic religion, monotheistic and Indus polytheistic. Actually, both Rigvedic and uh, this Indus valley, both they followed a polytheistic religion. They had a tree worship or maybe fertility cult worship, day, male, female deity worships, etc. in Indus valley civilization. Here also, Rigvedic, there is personification of these natural phenomena, natural forces and they worship to them. Okay, So, both had a polytheistic religion. The inscriptions of Vedic culture was alphabetic unlike pictographical script of Indus people. Indus people they had a pictographical script. They were written from right to left then left to right. But we have no idea whether these Rigvedi people know the art of writing. There is no evidence like that. Okay. So answer has to be correct one is A only. Now what is applicable to Jain doctrine, Buddhism, Jainism? So it's a previous year's question. Surest way of annihilating karma is to practice penance. True. Every object has a soul. Karma is the bane of soul must be ended. All these are correct regarding Jain doctrine. Now, what is the difference between Buddhism and Jainism? Let me tell you, Buddhism follows a middle path. Buddhism follow, follows middle path. Jainism follows extreme austere, extreme austere, ascetic life for salvation. Now, here in Buddhism, there is no belief in this immortality of the soul. But here it believes in the immortality of soul. Now here, uh, yeah, let us solve this the probable question here. With reference to history of ancient India, which of the following common to Buddhism, Jainism? They opposed to rituals and sacrifices but supported idolatry. First of all, you should understand both of these religions, they were anti-Brahminical religions. Or they were heterodox sect, heterodox sect. They opposed to this orthodox sect. Okay. So they were they opposed to rituals and sacrifices. Also, they opposed to this idolatry. Later versions of Jainism Buddhism started worshipping idols of Mahavira or Buddha, etc. So Buddha Mahavira, they were totally against idolatry, rituals, and sacrifices. They propagated middle way or middle path as a way of uh, liberation. They advocated rigorous asceticism and self-mortification. You see that? Okay, middle path is only in Buddhism. And these uh, extreme austere ascetic practices that is in Jainism. So they are not common to Buddhism, Jainism. So your answer has to be uh, none of the above. D is your answer. Now which of the following dynasties ruling over North India at the time of Alexander's invasion? Okay, sometimes you can uh, expect the chronology based questions. Okay, know the chrono chronology, it's important. Yes, that time when Babar inverted, who was the ruler of Vijayanagar Empire? Okay, this is the way they are asking. So, Alexander's invasion, the ruler of Magadha was, it was, yes, that is, the Nanda dynasty was ruling this Magadha. Now, Mahajanpadas, guild existed during Mahajanpadas. Exactly, that is true statement. Anguttara Nigaya, the Buddhist test knows only 12 Mahajanpadas that were supposed to be tiny kingdoms. You see, that is a contrasting, I mean, this is contrasting with the question. You can see that Mahajanpada means it is greater kingdom. The Nanguthara Nikaya talks about 12, 13, 14, whatever, that doesn't matter. But the additional fitting you see, that were supposed to be tiny kingdoms. How a Mahajanpada can be a tiny kingdom? 
Mahajanpada itself means it is greater kingdom. Okay, so Mahajanpada cannot be tiny kingdoms. So that is the that is the reason, especially Anguttara Nigaya that talks about 16 Mahajanpadas. First thing, second is it is not tiny kingdoms, it is greater kingdoms. Then only it can be Mahajanpada. So that is eliminated. Alexander defeated Magadha uh, ruler Mahapadmananda. We discussed Alexander never invaded Magadha. Chinese pilgrim Fahim visited India during the reign of Kanishka. Uh, Fahim's visit that was during the time of this I mean, Kanishka is out of contest here. Kanishka is post to Mauryan ruler. Kanishka is post to Mauryan ruler. Okay, and sometimes totally contrasting, totally alien statements can be asked. Most cases that can be wrong statements. Okay, see, Chinese pilgrim Fahin visited India during the reign of Kanishka. No, Fahin visited during time of Chandragupta, Gupta ruler. And also, this, this is out of the contest also. So, anyway, let us see. They are asking about Mahajanpadas. There is no connection with the Mahajanpadas. Fourth statement has no connection with the Mahajanpadas. So, not correct they are asking here. So, let me tell you, two, three, four, all are not correct statements. Ashoka annexed Kalinga to Mauryan Empire. Kalinga controlled the land and sea routes to South India. It's a Paka conceptual co uh, thing which we already studied. Both are correct here. With reference to Mauryan Empire, consider the following. Ashoka succeeded his father Bimbisara. It's not Bimbisara. His father was Bindusara. So sometimes the uh, similar words can be, you know, interchanged. To take care of that. Then the last Mauryan ruler, Brahadrada, was succeeded by Pushyamitra Sangha. Okay, after Maurya, then there is a Sangha dynasty, foundation by Pushyamitra Sangha. Obviously, Pushyamitra Sangha killed the last uh, Mauryan ruler, Brahadrada. So here, Ashoka's father was Bindusara, not Bimbisara. Then last Mauryan ruler Brahadra was succeeded by Pushyamitra Sangha. That is two. Two only is your answer. Yeah, which one of the following not a feature of Gandhara style of Buddha's images? So Gandhara, Madura, Amaravati schools of what you study in post Maurya. So take care that this Gandhara, this is Gandhara is developed in this northwestern region of Indian subcontinent. It has influence of the Greek Roman sculptors. Okay. And it produced Buddhist images. Now here, the first one is okay. First answer you see. Sometimes the extreme words are used. It doesn't mean that it has to be wrong statements. Okay, that is why I am telling you where you have uh, apply where you have to apply the educated girls in the extreme cases. Definitely, where that time you apply these these elimination strategies. So here the answer D. They are always shown in Abhay Mudra. That is wrong statement. They are shown in various mudras. Then Gandhara school of art. In Gandhara art, Buddha had a symbolic depictions. Take care that in Gandhara, yes, they had a, they produced Buddha like Apollo, Greek god Apollo. I mean in human figure, just like the human figure. Buddha was produced in human figure, anthropomorphic tradition. Okay, anatomical accuracy or this Greek realism, all these were the features of Gandhara. Buddha was never shown in these symbols and designs, you know. Buddha was produced in human shape with all muscular features, masculine features, etc. Uh, then these images of Buddha were fashioned in indo siloni style. You see, this is a school which developed in the northwestern part of India. This is not in the extreme south. Okay, so let us see. That is that is totally a contradictory statement. We shall eliminate this. Yes, the Buddha images of Buddhas were fashioned on this Greek Roman styles, not the Sri Lankan style. Okay, so your answer has to be yeah, answer has to be D. Neither one nor two. Alhabba, the pillar inscription associated with uh, yeah, Samudra Gupta. Also, it contains inscriptions of Ashoka and Jahangir. With reference to developments in science, medicine, literature during Gupta, consider the following. Amarasimha compiled a lexicon called the Ashtadai. Amarasimha's various, Amarasimha, uh, his famous work is Amarakosha. Ashtadai, that is a grammar work, Sanskrit grammar work by this Panani. Then Padanchali's Mahabhasha is also a grammar work, Sanskrit grammar work. Sanskrit language became prominent during Gupta, exactly. So, Shuddha Samhita Sanskrit test on major concepts of Ayurveda medicine, that is also true. So, 2 and 3 can be correct, okay. 2 and 3 can be correct and first is wrong, your answer has to be C, 2 and 3 only. So, let me tell you, apply the elimination, these different methods, but it is not a hardcore rule which you must follow. Where you feel after solving 40 to 50 questions, definitely there are some questions where you have to apply the educated guess. Where you can apply these different types of elimination strategies. Okay. So, you may have your own strategies also. Anyway, just have a revision. Just revise it well. Just enjoy your revisions. Wishing you all the very best for your prelims examination. 
and uh, please keep on watching our sessions if you find them helpful please subscribe our channel thank you